Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're here with Erica Stanford, who is the founder of Crypto Curry Club and the author of Crypto Wars, which is coming out in July. We're going to be mainly focusing on the book because she talks about uh, a lot of the biggest scams and hacks over the last uh, year or so, and I want to kind of dive into all of that. Uh, there's been a lot going on lately uh, with scams and hacks in the crypto space. So I think this is super important for people to uh, get more education around, more awareness, and just be aware of these types of things. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, before we dive into all this good stuff, uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you originally got into crypto? Sure. So I run the Crypto Curry Club. It's, it's now become the main crypto community in the UK. Um, which is super cool. We had a, a whole load of in-person and open networking events and, and sort of educational events um, uh, until lockdown, all focused around food. So just in, in, mostly invite only, just got a load of really super cool people in the room, like founders of, of the main crypto companies or people driving crypto or innovation or payments in some of the world's biggest corporations and companies, just all together in a room with lots of food and, and drink. So really, really cool but, but sort of really super business focused events. Um, how I got into crypto. So I lived in Buenos Aires and Argentina during the economic crash. And, and that was a pretty interesting experience. You know, you had whole groups of people just lost all of their money. Um, loads of people came homeless, loads of people just lost all of their money. And, and what was really interesting during the time is, is everyone I spoke to there, people just didn't trust banks and the standard sort of protocol for the educated middle and upper classes was that the minute they got paid in, in pesos was to take that money and convert it into euros and dollars and, and literally keep banknotes in safes in their flats and houses so that they, they just didn't trust banks. And the summer before that, I'd been traveling around Guatemala just, just by myself. This was, I think, 2007, so before Bitcoin came about. And I got mugged like four times in a row pretty quickly. So every card I'd taken wow. with me, every method of payment I had had um, was, 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 you know, had been stolen. So I, um, I, I had to rely on Western Union. So, you know, after I'd been mugged a whole bunch of times, I walked to the Western Union office and called my dad who sent me, sent me money and, and that took three days to arrive and cost 14% and, you know, had to do that for the rest of the summer. And, and at the time, obviously that was inconvenient more than a, a sort of a, a major um, crisis. But it, it did make me realize, like, that was annoying for me and unfortunate for me, uh, but that was for a summer. But that really was the only way you could get money into these areas at the time. And, and this is a, a load of people there. And I've got some, some family in Mexico. I've since traveled a lot in, in Asia and so forth. And you realize there's so many people that don't have access to banking facilities and can't just make payments with their with their iPhone or with their card or can't just send money just super easily as, as we we traditionally can in the West and, and on day to day. And, and that made me really just go sort of deep dive research into the remittance industry and how that works. And you see, I mean, there's 2.5 billion people around the world who can't access payments and can't act to access digital payments and banking and, and have to pay remittance companies just to get money around. And they're paying up to 30 percent in some cases of of all of their money just to get money home to their families or so forth. And the standard is 6.9%. So that was in the back of my mind. So when I heard about crypto and, you know, just started looking at it, started playing around, I was like, wow, you can send transactions instantly and, and almost for free and immediately. You don't have to rely on a third party. You don't have to pay huge sums of money to do so. I, I could just totally see the potential of the tech and just, just geeked out a little bit. And, and then awesome. uh, it was just, just playing with it, working around on it, and wanted to meet more people in the space. There wasn't really a crypto community at the time in the UK. That there were events, but it was hard to meet people. So started my own, and the Crypto Carry Club was one. Awesome, awesome. So then when did you start to get like focused in on scams, hacks, and uh, when did you start writing Crypto Wars? So the, the scams, I, I was sent a link to, there was a, a podcast series called The Missing Crypto Queen, hosted by the BBC, which went deep dive into, into a, a Ponzi scheme called OneCoin. And I was sent that podcast and I was totally hooked on it. It's, it's a guy called Jamie Bartlett, who works for the BBC, who just did this terrific job on doing this podcast. So 
I, I heard the podcast. I, I just thought it was incredibly well done. Sent Jamie a message just sort of slightly cheekily out of the blue. It was like, wow, this is amazing. I would love, love, love if you'd be willing to speak at my Crypto Curry Club, if you'd be willing, not really expecting a reply. And, and he replied saying, you know, he'd heard about it. He thought it'd be really cool. So he came to, to one of our events and, and we hosted Jamie, who sort of spoke to us um, a, a, in a sort of Chatham House rule setting. We had about 60 people there in a, in a closed off environment. And he shared just the most incredible stories and, and things that he couldn't really share so easily publicly on a podcast and started talking a load about the, the, the real sort of crime and the real dark stories behind one coin and it was it was absolutely fascinating just an incredible afternoon and what was really interesting there because our, our members and the people coming to the crypto Curry club they're they're founders of, of crypto companies they're the people that have been in the space often since pretty early days they've seen a lot and a lot of these guys that that heard jamie then came up to me afterwards and started telling me about the the scams that they'd seen and what they'd witnessed since since early days of of Bitcoin and crypto. And some of them, you know, they, they said that they tried to report these scams or tried to raise awareness about them or try to out scammers. And quite a few of them had death threats. They'd have they'd had all sorts of threats. They'd had all sorts of problems for just trying to raise awareness about some of the the different earlier scams. Um, you know, and some of them had since given up doing so, and some of them were still persevering. And from that, I got invited into um, the, the various different chat rooms and social media rooms that some of the scams are still still today running. I, I, I got given access, sometimes using my name, sometimes using other names. And so many, you've got so many massive, massive scams still running today that have totally active chat rooms and forums operating on, on Facebook and on different social media platforms, totally pretty much openly. And, you know, just getting brought into these and you see how persuasive they still are and how many people are still crowding around them and still buying into those and really, really defending the scams. And when some people try and protect them and say, hey, this is a scam, be careful, they, they, they get shot down. And they've got such loyal following. So that that was how I, I sort of got brought into to really looking into it and hearing more about it. And, and then a publisher reached out to me, Kogan Page reached out with this idea for this book um, on called Crypto Wars on the bigger scams. And you know, the timing was perfect. It was just, just at the start of lockdown. So um, I, I started researching it and, and started writing the book. So that was that took me all of last year, all through all through lockdown pretty much. Wow. Yeah. And uh yeah, I mean it is it is crazy how many scams are out there and or even just like things that are somewhat predatory or you know, just super risky. It's almost hard to tell if it's like a scam or if it's just so risky that you're probably going to lose all your money right. anyways. Where would you try to like draw the distinction between something being a bad project versus something being an outright scam, uh, like a pump and dump versus like maybe a signal group. What are yeah. some kind of examples and uh, differentiations between something like that? I, I mean, that's I think the, the the large problem that crypto has, um, because there there are some that are that are just pure outright scams, and, and then you you've got other ones that were you know, maybe a good or a genuine idea. That was maybe opportunistic. That maybe didn't have the best business idea. That that just didn't do well, and that was some of the ICO. So you've got everything in crypto from genuinely good projects, you know, say Bitcoin on on one side, through to to op opportunistic, through to some that had bad luck, through to some that that really weren't good ideas, through to some that maybe started out with good intentions and then raised money and then didn't really know what to do. And and either decided it was easier to exit scam or just just drove the business into the ground through incompetence. And, and then you've got the the downright scams that that really were scams. And it, it's you've got every aspect of that in crypto. And, and I think, like you say, one of the main problems you've got because you've got some that are, are are downright scams that are Ponzi schemes from the start. You know, in in some cases run and organized by organized crime and and by really professional scammers but then you've got the whole range of 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 multi-level marketing that's crept into crypto and network marketing and influencers promoting projects and and one of the the big 
problems is how easy it is to promote crypto projects because everyone's seen the rise of some of the earlier cryptocurrencies, everyone's seen the rise of, of the ICOs or some of them. And you can see now how much, I mean, just look at Dogecoin in the news just at the moment. I mean, it's, it's shot up crazy amounts. And, and I mean, not, not, not saying that that's a scam by any definition of the word, but there are, there are so many influencers that, that can see the volatility in crypto. And it really is easy to, to pump, a, a, as you say, a crypto. And whereas mm -hmm. before you had the sort of the closed groups that, that were these pump and dump rooms that people paid to be a part of and they said buy this coin now and sell this coin now and it was a really organized pump and, and now you've got more a trend to influencers um, who are either you know, in some cases paid by the project um, or in some cases just see that they can themselves manipulate the markets they see a, a, a cryptocurrency that they think that 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 is has low enough liquidity or, or, or low enough volume that that really they can manipulate so that they buy into it and then promote it to their followers. And then their followers think, well, you know, I trust this influencer, I'll buy this coin. And then because their followers buy the coin, that pushes the price up. So the followers see that, wow, this influencer was really right. They said that this coin was going to go up and it went up. And then the, the influencer says, oh, it will go up some more. So they believe, you know, well, that the influencer was right. And, and so we'll buy some more and some more and some more. And then it goes up. And they don't necessarily see that sometimes it's the influencer and them leading people to buy that coin that has been pushing the price up all the while whilst the influencer is selling out onto their followers. So there's, there's that angle. Um, and, and I think the, the biggest problem we're, we're, we're seeing in, in, in crypto, it just it, it, in my personal um, feeling, the, the problem that has affected the most people is you've got multi-level marketing or network marketing where they've they've bought this concept whereas if you bring somebody into to invest in something you get a reward and if they bring somebody to else to invest in something they get a reward and you get a reward so you're motivated to bring as many people in and you've got these 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 scams and these projects that have so, become so big and affected so many people now because people are, are incentivized and, and paid really good money to bring people in so they go to all their friends and their families and their followers and you've got religious leaders now going to their congregations and community leaders going to their entire villages and communities to bring people into these scams and getting paid from every person that they, they bring in and how they become so bad is because it's not just a company that's that's doing the scamming and it's not the, the, the company or the scam itself that's bringing people in it, it gets spread out so fast so that people are are buying and are being led to 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 come into the scams by people that they know and trust and then they're bringing more and more people in and, and that spread some of these these scams really really far into to, well it, all over the world and and brought in millions of people and it, again that's a gray area because some people again know that it's a scam from the start and they're just being opportunistic and they're just trying to make their money and then other people themselves are, are almost a victim to it because they've they've believed the claims and they've bought it themselves and they you know they they the scams tend to pay out at the start so they see well I invested X amount of money and I'm getting X amount of money back so therefore it's good and it's true and so it's good if I bring my friends and family in because then they'll get these returns too and they're spreading the scam but also because they've believed it and and, and they're they're part of it and. Again, that's a, a very grey area because is it their fault that they're spreading the scam? Not necessarily because they think they're doing good. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very good point. And I like that you brought up Doge because, well, again, I don't think it's a scam either. Uh, it's got that like euphoric quality that a lot of scams have with the price being so volatile. And, and I still think there's a lot of people that are going to lose a lot of money. There's a lot of people uh, that are going to lose a lot of money. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and that's like a huge part of it, right? It's, it, it might not be a scam, but if you're going to lose a bunch of money, it's the same result more or less, uh, as if you were scammed either way. Mm -hmm. Um, you talked a lot about of in influencers there. So do you think a big part of it is just like lack of accountability for influencers and people that are doing these promotions? Um, because like you said, I've seen countless influencers in this space 
uh, even in like private groups that like I'm just a part of because I'm an influencer as well. And I see a lot of people who are not disclosing, you know, paid promotions, mm -hmm. which as far as I'm concerned is just straight up illegal. Um, and they're influencing tons of people to buy certain things and they're not disclosing payments or they've got a lot of uh, that crypto themselves. So how much is this like education? How much is this like we need to hold people more accountable? What can people actually do about this? I, I think you're totally right that the, the influencers is, is a huge part of the problem. And, and like you say, there's some that are paid by the projects and not disclosing. There's some that hold the currency themselves and hope that by bringing other people in, it will go up in value and, and not disclosing that. And there's some that are just promoting scams from the start. But then, it, it again, it's a little bit of a gray area because it, it can be hard to prove that they know that they were promoting a scam. And this is one of the, the big problems we've seen with the multi-level marketing scams. Because, you know, as soon as it's multi-level marketing, they say, well, we're selling an education package. We're selling Bitcoin mining. We're, we're selling access to this arbitrage trading, whatever it is. So it, it can be worded that they're selling what they say is a real product. Now, okay, maybe that, that's, that's a little bit gray, but it, it, it can be a gray area between knowing if the influencer really knows that they're promoting a scam or not. But I, I think you're totally right that the, there needs to be a lot more accountability on it. And especially some of the, the newer platforms, for example, TikTok, you've got lots of influencers now going onto there and amassing huge followings and saying pretty much whatever they like. And there's no, I mean, there's no regulation on there. There's no accountability on there. And, and we've seen a few recently, some influencers promoting projects that, that were scams and, and lots of their followers bought into them just believing them bought into them and then you know a week or so later the influencer said oh sorry i found out it was a scam i'm really sorry i feel bad too i lost money too and in my opinion that's probably not good enough if you've got a, a big following and you're really actively promoting project then even if you've invested or not there, there's a certain amount of due diligence needed but then I, I think it's it's a larger problem and certainly in in the past you've got the whole industry you've got some exchanges that will list pretty much any project um scam or, or, or not scam and, and then maybe there needs to be a levels of accountability there and, and it, again it's a gray area between them I mean, if you look back at say at some of the icos some of them weren't scams to start off with that they maybe had no use case, they maybe had no worth, no value, no business plan, but maybe they weren't scams. But like you say, they, they got pumped up through the hype. And still the end result is, I think the, for, of, of all of the ICOs, 98% were either scams or lost basically all of the money that people invested. It's the same end result. Yeah. Yeah. And then now in our current bull run, you know, a big thing now is NFTs and DeFi. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I see I see a new DeFi project every single day um, and they all generally do the same thing. But the use case is just what percentage APY you can get. <laughs> so I'm curious, uh, what are your thoughts on DeFi and NFTs? I think NFTs is is slightly different in the sense that yes some of them are going for what i would describe as crazy money for a digital something that you can't really use and and maybe the investors think it's special or maybe see that it's it's something that they can you know hold and will gain a value and sell on i i, I think for me the difference with with nfts is if somebody wants to spend 69 million or 10 million or whatever on a piece of digital art that's that's one person really making a choice for, for themselves, it's it's not sort of being promoted widely as a as a get rich quick scheme. It's not someone saying if you buy this, it will guaranteed go up in value. That that's I, I feel for NFTs. I, I think some of the prices are very high, but that is individuals making decisions on what they want to pay for digital objects. The same as one might argue, well, that this pair of trainers is high, or this diamond, or whatever is is high. So, yes, I think the NFTs are slightly more extreme, but I don't think that's um, the, the same thing as, for example, the ICO 
hype where you're bringing people in and people are investing because they think they're going to get rich with the NFTs that these people are choosing to make a decision about buying something which may or may not go down in value, but that's still people that have that money making a choice. I, I, that That's my feeling. And I think with, with NFTs, it's a really interesting space at the moment because, I mean, just, just as with crypto, if you take away all the hype from the ICOs, Crypto, the technology, is is incredible. It's life changing. You can make micropayments. You can send transactions. You can bypass remittances. You can pay one p for a piece of digital content. You've got so many opportunities that the technology opens up. And, and I think it's the same with NFTs. People are getting excited at the moment because someone paid sixty nine dollars, sixty nine million dollars for a piece of digital art. But the actual technology, it, it it can be used, and it's already being used in so many industries with so many use cases to to prove digital ownership of something or to prove digital something so there's so many incredible potential use cases for nfts that i think it's a really exciting space but i i do see that as as different um to yeah. to the icos and especially with the sort of the, the scam space because that's really people buying it because they believe that they're gonna get rich um yeah DeFi, yeah and just real quick on yeah. nfts and yeah i mean i i wasn't um you know, like inferring that maybe the whole space was a scam more so that there's a lot of like influencers who will just like drop a ton of NFTs because they know it's like it's hot right now. So, you know, drop a bunch of NFTs, sell them for like insane amounts and uh, and just like hope that their followers just like buy them all up. Right. Uh, obviously, that's not a scam, but uh, in terms of just like how should you go about navigating the NFT space with things like that going on? Like, what are your thoughts on that? I, I guess my feeling with NFTs is you're, you're buying effectively a digital object. So if it's something that you really want and that you want to have for the sake of having it, I, I'd say rather than seeing it as something that will go up in value, uh, you know, I guess my, my feeling on it is if, if it's something that you want to buy, if that's something you want to spend your money on, um, don't assume that it's going to go up in value. Don't assume that it's going to maintain its value. Um, and, you know, may maybe it will, or maybe it will crash to almost zero. But I, I guess if you're, if you're looking at buying NFTs, only, only buy what you'd want to, to buy and own for the sake of owning it without any uh, assumptions about getting any money back for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a perfect uh, succinct way to put it. And then, sorry, what were your thoughts on uh, DeFi? DeFi, I mean, it's it's DeFi, I, I see as the same as sort of the early days of crypto. It's, it's some incredible new concepts, some incredible new technologies and ideas out there. And, and there's some incredible companies out there that, that are doing incredible things that are, are real, genuine companies. So I, I think as a sort of a brief overview of the DeFi space, um, it's... I think on overview, it's it's less scammy. On overview, it's it's companies that are, are really trying to do a lot of really cool stuff in tech. I, I think there's a number of of projects that have been overhyped. I think there's a, a number of, of of projects and and companies in space. I don't know if we need to go into naming names. Where uh, I, I think it's it's dubious who's behind them or what the intentions are, and and where the intention is really to just make a bunch of money and get out quick. But then I, I think also in DeFi, there are some incredible companies that are doing incredible things, um, just quietly going about their business. And I, I think I, I, I think with a little bit of research, one can see which are the companies that are really focused on the tech and on just raising just enough money to build out what they want to do. And, and those ones that are just going for the, the, the max make money now and who knows if they'll exit or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what are some like things that people can, uh, take away with them from this and kind of, uh, like what are red flags to look for? What are things that people can do to better protect themselves or, you know, things that they should research when they're looking into coins? What's some advice that you would give to people? I mean, I think the, the biggest immediate red, red flag to look for, you've got so many of these, these projects that we've seen over and over again making promises or, or, or making guarantees and you know or if there's something that's too good to be true if it's you can get dogecoin cheaper here than anywhere else um or <laughs> the, that was that yeah. case with the exactly the forex the exchange that just exit scammed with 2.2 billion dollars 
for, for promising a, a substantial discount on, on buying Dogecoin. But then what a lot of the, the, the Ponzi schemes do is they, they make uh, promises and they make guarantees. And, and so many scams have done this. If you buy this token and you put in X amount, you're guaranteed get Y amount or you'll get X amount or it will multiply and, and then it will be worth whatever. And, and it, A, it's illegal to, to guarantee returns like that but also it's it's just not possible there's never been any and any trader any technology in the world that can guarantee set returns it simply isn't possible you can't know the future so if any any project is is guaranteeing or promising set returns um generally avoid it like the plague my feeling is if if there's anything that that touches network marketing or multi-level marketing um in, in crypto space, I haven't seen one yet that isn't a scam. Uh, avoid that like the plague. It's, it's far too risky. And I mean, some of the, the really common trends that we've seen are, are around arbitrage trading or, or, or mining. And, and, and I think one of the problems in crypto is that it's not easy to get into. It, it's, it's not necessarily easy to, to buy Bitcoin and, and make money and people just want to make um, you know, th these levels of money that they've seen other people make. And, and so they trust the claims that, you know, with, with these scams that are like, send us your Bitcoin or send us your money and we'll trade it for you and you'll get X back. Mm. Or send us your yeah. Bitcoin and we'll trade it and you'll get double back. Or send us your Bitcoin or your money and we'll mine Bitcoin for you. And we've got these mining machines and you'll get money back. And they they don't have the magical bot. They don't have the mining machines. And I think then it's, it's just looking at a little bit of reality. There's, you've got banks and trading firms and investment firms who who have the best technologies and the best algorithms and the best traders in that, and they can invest huge amounts of money in, in, into their trades and so forth. And they can't guarantee, they can't guarantee returns, and they certainly don't get a guaranteed return of X amount of a percent every day. And you've got a lot of these these. Um, projects and scams are offering claims that, that that are just too good to be true so don't don't send bitcoin in to, to anything that is promising or guaranteeing anything at, at the most basic level but then it, you know it is hard with some scams because you look at some of the websites and they look good and and they make these claims i mean there's one out of London recently, and you know they, they say, well, we're listed on the London Stock Exchange, or we're going to be listed on the London Stock Exchange. We're going to be regulated. We're in partnership with this, and you know the scams will say, we've got a Visa card, we've got a Mastercard, we've got this, we've got this partnership, and, and the, the partnerships don't exist, but they say that on their website, and and you can't blame people necessarily for for falling for that because I think the the the, the basic human inclination is to just trust what you see so i guess my overwhelming and advice in crypto is take everything with a very large pinch of salt and do an awful lot of research and you know even if it's just googling the name of the project with the word scam together if if, if there's any doubt that it's usually a few people at, at least voicing that doubt on google mm -hmm. and if they're yeah. voicing that doubt take it seriously yeah, yeah, absolutely. So like with one example, um, BitClout, for mm -hmm. example, I when I first learned about it and I started diving into it, there's very few people that are actually out there talking negatively about it right. or like shedding light on it um, because there's so much buzz around it. There's a lot of famous people who have verified on the platform um, and it just... For some reason, there's not a lot of people who are questioning it because they're saying, well, they'll probably eventually come out with, you know, withdrawals. There's so many big VCs that are involved. There's so much funding or whatever it happens to be that it, it shouldn't be a scam and that, it, you know, it, it'll work out. What would you say to people like that with that mentality? Um, and I mean, what are your thoughts on like not not being able to withdraw or exit uh, or get out of the investment in some way. Uh, I, I mean, I'd see that as a huge red flag. Um, I mean, I think there's there's a few things in in crypto and, and in the scams that the the general trend is that if if there's a crypto scam, the last people they're going to promote it to or market it to are, are those people that are in crypto. So they're they're going to go out of their way often to try and not make 
people in crypto aware of what they're doing. So they're going to promote to, to, to more vulnerable people. They're going to promote to people that aren't actively in crypto who won't necessarily spot the red flags or who won't necessarily be able to look at something and go, that's a scam or that that isn't technically possible or, or whatever it is. So, I, I mean, this is a, a, a common and overwhelming trend. I mean, if you say, just look at one coin, it was a, a, a massive Ponzi scheme. They raised somewhere between four and 15 billion pe- billion um, dollars in, in, in lost money for people. But most people in crypto had never even heard of one coin until mm-hmm. the sort of the, the investigations and the podcast series and came out because they just weren't promoting themselves to to um to people in crypto i mean there's a big one out now in london um you know and they, they've they've got in they've scammed loads of people and lots of money and they never most people again in crypto had never heard uh, about this this project because it you just don't come across it and i think that's that's one of the things say with bitcloud i think you're the second person that ever mentioned it to me most people in crypto have just never heard of it because they're not they're not on that radar and they're not marketing to those people and then i i mean the the other thing is we've seen it before with with ICOs. there's been so many celebrities um, have have fallen for these or believed the promises or, or been victims them, themselves. But there are lots of celebrities who have now been either fined or arrested or, or questioned over promoting crypto companies. And, you know, in some cases, yes, the celebrities should have done more due diligence. Or in other cases, they, they were deceived themselves and maybe believed that they were promoting something good and, and you know, had been paid for doing so. So, just because something's got uh, celebrities or an influencer and endorsers backing doesn't doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, mm-hmm. and, and projects can change. Projects can start out with good intentions that that people and you know, investors and VCs can believe, and then they raise a load of money, and then the intentions can change. So even because something got some credible's early backing doesn't mean that it continues to be good. Um, so bit clout from what i've seen of it it's it's something that i personally wouldn't be recommending people to go anywhere near um but i I think that's the main thing that the the scams aren't going to promote themselves to to people who understand that it's a scam yeah yeah i think that's actually really succinct because i never really thought about that before that uh most people in the crypto space that i've talked to hadn't really had much exposure to bit clout um, just because like they, they didn't really see it or they, uh, you know, they not weren't really radar, talking about it. The, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the only people that I did see talk about it were people who just posted to let people know that the profile that was on BitClout was not actually them. Uh, and it was just like, identity. which is a red flag in itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like they, they took 15,000 profiles and just like copied them onto their platform. And then they got a cease and desist for at least one that I'm aware of. Um, And then now they have all all the ones that weren't reserved can just make any account representing anyone and uh, trick people into believing that as well. So I've seen at least three people that I uh, that I know in the crypto space who are also influencers who have had their accounts uh, fakely created or represented on BitCloud as well. Uh, and people have been buying their coins. So yeah, definitely a very, very sketchy project to be, uh, to be watching out for. What are some other like prominent, uh, scams or hacks that, uh, you cover in the book to give people like a little bit of an idea of, uh, of what you'll be going through? Sure. I mean, the, the, the main ones that we go into are, are the, the, the biggest Ponzi schemes. You've got the OneCoin, you've got the BitConnect, you've got a, a Plus token. There was a, a massive uh, Ponzi scheme that was a, a, a mining um, company or a company that said they did Bitcoin mining. It was called BitClub Network. And I think in the end, they raised $722 million from wow. from saying, well, we've got this incredible mining equipment. And if you send us your money, we'll mine Bitcoin and you'll get these returns. And then you know, it transpired that they never owned any mining equipment. They had some photos of, of some other Bitcoin mining facilities. Um, and other chapters touch on this one about the 
the ICO period, not that that was exclusively scams, but just talking about how it was so big, how it was so hyped, about a lot of the opportunism that was in the space. Um, one talking about the pump and dumps and, and it, again, some of the influences and, for example, John McAfee's uh, coin of the mm-hmm. day tweets that, that really pumped a lot of coins and and the pump and dumps in the space. So it's a, the book is a mix of talking about some of the, the really biggest scams, um, some of the, 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 the just the sort of the Wild West era that was, you know, the earlier days of, of crypto and how it got so, so mad and, and so crazy. And, and then there's some that are not scams that were just a series of, of sort of mis, misfortunate events and such as the, the, the Mt. Gox, for example, that was a crypto exchange that, that collapsed and then had a load of money stolen and was hacked multiple times. I, I don't believe Mt. Gox was a scam. I think it was just a series of, of bad luck and events that caused it to lose a load of money, but it was still a really pivotal thing. In, in the crypto space. And then you've also got the Quadriga exchange, yeah. which was a, a Canadian exchange. They they had $250 million um, on the exchange and then the founder disappeared and, well, died. And, and you've still got, I think, the majority of people in the crypto community don't, don't believe that the founder mm-hmm. died. There doesn't seem to be an overwhelming proof that he died. But either way, it's now been found to have been a, a fraud from the start. And we go sort of into the, 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 the background of of that exchange and what started out as seeming to be a really friendly local Canadian crypto exchange that the guys founding it had been involved in in scams and in money laundering um, from from the start. So, mm-hmm. how do people protect themselves against like hacks, exchange hacks, um, you know, things things of that mm-hmm. nature? I mean, it, that again, it's a really big problem. And you've you've now got, you've got sort of institutional scale hacks, you've now got some governments, uh, some countries, I mean, North Korea is one of them, effectively sponsoring these crypto hacks and, and running hacks that are sort of on such a large scale. And then you've got individuals as well. I mean, one thing to note in, in crypto is just by keeping money on a on a crypto wallet or on an exchange doesn't mean it's safe. And exchanges in in many ways are a real hotbed for for hacks and scams. A because it's a lot of crypto in one space, and if that crypto is is what's called online, i.e., accessible, that that's a, a very vulnerable target for for being hacked. So they're you know that that it's more likely almost that it's hacked there in some cases than otherwise. But also you've there's been quite a few cases now of of exchanges and crypto wallets and so forth gathering a lot of money onto their crypto exchanges and not keeping that crypto securely, not keep, keeping that crypto in custody, just keeping that all in a, a, a centralized wallet. And then when they've got enough, basically saying thank you very much and, and goodbye and, and exit scamming with that money. So don't by default trust crypto exchanges. Don't by default trust um, trust crypto wallets that there are some that really use good good custody that, that that go out of their way to store the crypto securely that maybe have insurance that that use cold storage and so forth there so there are crypto wallets and crypto exchanges out there and, and especially on sort of the, the more institutional um, level where you're looking at larger volumes there are safe ways of storing crypto and there are some that that go out of their way to do what they can to, to be regulated to have to have security measures in place and there are some that really don't do that um so i, I would just recommend really doing a lot of, of due diligence and asking around before sending crypto anywhere or storing crypto anywhere and, and especially if things are promoted on social media or on websites it's there's so many scams now there's so many or it, some of them are scams and some of them are, are impersonations of real websites where they're, they're just creating a, a website or a social media link that's just one digit different to, to the sort of the real one, but it looks mm-hmm. identical and you get a lot of people falling for those. You've got some scams that are impersonating celebrities on, on Twitter, on social media saying, you know, send us your Bitcoin now, we'll send you back double or whatever. If anything's promising to double your Bitcoin or doing anything similar, avoid it like the plague. Um, even if it's from a celebrity's account, because celebrities accounts do get hacked. Um, and I think the important thing to bear in mind and remember is that some of these scams have huge marketing budgets uh, and poor 
a lot of the money that they get into marketing. So, you know, in some cases, half or so of the money that they bring in just goes straight into marketing. So you're looking at some companies where they've got a lot of money to do social media marketing, to do promotions, to pay influencers, to, to bribe people to come onto their platforms. So that, that's incredibly powerful. And you know that, that can be incredibly persuasive. And they, they can often hire and take on the, the best influencers, the best marketers, the best salespeople who in, in some cases don't even necessarily know that they're promoting a scam um, mm-hmm. because it's not from their space. So it, it, yeah, just because there's social media claims or there's influencers saying something is good doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I won't, uh, I won't name this platform, but, um, one that I mentioned to you before we started, Mm -hmm. they have, you know, all these advisors and all these people that they've brought onto the team Mm -hmm. that are either crypto influencers or have some sort of name recognition. And they'll always point to that when they have criticisms and say, well, like, look, we have these people on the team. Uh, you know, they have these credentials they They have this authority. Uh, there's no way that they would be involved with something that is a scam or whatever. Uh, so like, what would you say to people who either think that, um, you know, there's so much legitimacy around this that it mm-hmm. can't be a scam or something like, uh, you know, the price is so high or the value is so high that mm-hmm. like, you know, the, that they assume that the price legitimizes uh, the project as well. I, I mean, I think two things on, on the influencer side. I've seen it so many times that, that, that people's profiles have been used without them knowing or without mm. their permission. Um, that, that, that's, that's been done so often. So just because you see somebody recognize or an influencer or, a, you know, someone that's good in the space, just because you see their profile on a page or even if you just see um, social media endorsements from them, don't assume that that's actually them. I, I've seen it very, very many times um, that people have been um, impersonated and, uh, you know, I didn't even know that BitCloud were doing that. So thank you for raising my awareness too that I'll have a look at that platform afterwards. But that, that that's yeah. happened so many times that, that you can't assume that the influencer is aware of it. Um, the, the other thing is in some cases that there are influencers who are maybe sports people, actors or so forth, coming from a totally different industry who don't necessarily know or realize that what they're promoting is is something that's bad or something that they're promoting is a scam. Not that that makes it good that they're promoting that, but it does. It means that they're coming from a different industry. They don't necessarily understand blockchain and crypto, so they, they, they don't necessarily know that what they're promoting is is a scam. Um, and, and then going back to your point about price and, and where crypto is, is, is going, I mean, if you look, for example, at the, the price of, of Dogecoin or the market cap of, of Dogecoin now, it's astronomically high. I mean, I, I think it's gone down a little bit since I checked. But last time I checked, the, the market cap of Dogecoin was higher than the majority of countries in the world. That The market cap of, of just one cryptocurrency, not saying that Dogecoin is a scam. I, I don't believe it is. I think it's a fun project that's been pumped higher than probably anyone ever thought it was going to be pumped. But still, you've got the market cap of one currency is higher than the GDP of about 120 countries out there. And it's higher than the total valuation of these huge corporations that, that have so much underneath them, um, which in, in my feeling is a little bit artificial and a little bit high. So even though the price of something is really high, that can be a bubble. I mean, look at look at tulips in in I think it was Amsterdam. I have to check my check my my knowledge of the tulip bubble here. But but it, it's just making the point that prices really can get pushed crazy crazy high based on hype, based on excitement. Not necessarily that that's reflecting a true valuation. And and we've seen that so often. I think Doge now is is an example. And, and I don't believe Doge is a scam. But I think if you look at the the total market cap of Doge relative to entire countries, large countries, and, and relative to, to lie, uh, entire large corporations, I, I think one can start to to question whether that is is really sustainable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, with Doge, Doge is such an interesting one. Um, 
And I, I believe the last time I checked, it, it was at a lower price when this was the case, but because they're also printing 10,000 Doge a day, mm. I believe it was like they needed $750,000 US coming in every day to just not lose value right. uh, on Doge, at least currently. Um, so something like that is 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 insane and, and right. ridiculous to me that uh, you know that the price is probably going to go down unless people are investing. So you literally need all like all this money coming in just to sustain it, not even to make money. Mm. Um, so like something like that just kind of blows my yeah. mind. Um, and, and like you said, like it's valued higher than a lot of like very profitable companies and there's really no profits being created from Doge. So, I mean, right. if it had like a PE ratio, it would just be like infinity. Right. Um, and, and Doge actually is, is used. I mean, I don't want to pick on Doge here, but it's it's actually used. It's accepted as a method of payment by quite a few companies. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I was asked earlier today, well, some of the other Mimi coins like the Shiba Inu coin or whatever are they are they too low by comparison does that mean they're going to go up in value it's like no not 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 necessarily because i mean okay doge yeah, it doesn't really have much use case but people do accept doge as a method of payment and that's more to be said than a lot of them yeah yeah actually that is that is very true although uh i'd push back on that a bit by saying that uh doge fees are up to like 40 times more expensive than uh dash for example right or like you know bitcoin cash is in 40x but it, there's many much more feasible uh use case oh, cryptocurrencies I, for I, what doge i'm not the only like that, use but case it, of but doge. it is accepted yeah. as a method of payment and it's got yeah, a loyal yeah, 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 yeah. base which is yeah which absolutely is more to be said than a lot of um projects one could yeah, argue yeah 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 yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, on the topic of like loyal communities, what are your thoughts around like, you know, if someone does come out and criticize something, uh, for example, like when I criticize Hex, um, they'll be like, all right, Hex Army, let's go. And they'll start adding all the hashtags so that everyone knows to go to my my post and just right. like attack it so you. then they'll yeah. and then yeah and then they go to their discord and they say all right like go to this post and you know comment or whatever uh so like what what are your thoughts there like how do people like navigate that and like what can you really do uh because you've got all this like pressure uh, to just not say anything and you know hope someone else will talk about it like like we're doing yeah um so what what can those people do i mean it's it's a real problem i remember once getting asked about bitconnect and and this was i think it was when bitcoin bitconnect already had crashed so bitconnect was a huge a total scam and you know the, the the value totally crashed and people lost life savings and it was a you know, arguably a clear scam from the start. And then mm -hmm. and then they decided to launch BitConnect 2, Bitcoin XX and over ICO and and just, you know, change the price by 10x just to try and get more money out of people. And this was when it was already a clear scam that most people knew that it was a scam, that 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 it was really clear that they they they'd exit scam, that a lot of people had lost money, that they're just chancing to, to try and uh, and launch another scam. And somebody asked me about this BitConnect X, which was their, their next ICO, and I was like, it's a scam, avoid, and totally got my head bitten off. Totally got my head bitten off. And I've seen that happen so often. And, and you know, like I said at the start, people, some of the people early in the crypto space that had been trying to oust some of these scams and to make people aware of them, they've they've had literal death threats. Um, mm -hmm. So the the power of of some of the, the the bigger scams and you know some of them that really have these loyal communities of, of people who've bought in and therefore invested and they don't want to hear anything of anything else uh, and they'll be loyal to the end and, and some of these scams are, are are run and managed by organized crime and, and you know where people really do have cause to be worried about uh, about outing them. And, and you know, in in some cases, bad things really have happened or could happen. So it's it's not to be taken lightly that it's it's an easy thing to oust some of these crypto scams. And and I don't think that that should be underestimated. Hex again, it's it's one the the little I've heard of it. My my feeling would be naturally to stay as far away as possible. I don't see anything good that will come out of that. But but like you say, there's there's some real loyal fan bases. But I think what is important to do is if you go into the community groups and the, the sort of the chat rooms and the forums 
of of any project um that there's a lot of die hardness about it and that is what i, I feel it is actually one of the problems in the crypto space because if you go to sort of the the really die hard bitcoiners ethereum's a scam all altcoins are scams the dollar is mm -hmm. a scam and, and if you go to sort of the really hard ethereum people they'll say exactly the same oh bitcoin's a scam bitcoin's useless all altcoins are a scam the dollar is a scam and and you know i'm exaggerating a little bit but there, there's so many groups in crypto will say this is a scam that's a scam that's a scam or this is a problem and that's bad when I, I feel that that doesn't really help the space because there's some projects that really are scams and, and that when people say it's a scam that's lost amongst all of the other sort of you know what is known as as fudding or, or downplaying in the industry so it can be if somebody says one is a scam then you know people that have that have maybe fallen for that or invested in that will say well but you also said that ethereum's a scam or you also said that dollars a scam or you also said that this is a scam or that's a scam so that that makes the accusations lose a bit of their weight in my experience but you know it's so community groups can be so passionate and especially mm -hmm. people that have invested, they've they've invested their their hopes. Often they've invested their money or brought their families in, so that they've got a lot, you know, mentally as as well as as physically invested. And they they don't want to see that that maybe it's a scam or maybe it's a problem or maybe that what they've done is is caused their families to lose money. So they kind of have to keep going on with it. So I think the only thing one can really do is is not not really trust the community groups blindly, but get out of there. And, and look at what are other people saying. What is what are you know other angles saying, and mm -hmm. and if there are enough people questioning it or saying it's a scam, don't don't see that as just being negative or, or uh, as as designed to knock it down, but maybe really look into why they're saying that. Yeah, yeah, and like I, I feel like one of the biggest rebuttals that I'll get is, well, you know, you were wrong about one tiny thing right. or like you screwed up the name of something so like you haven't done enough research and right. this discredits like the or, actual yeah, exactly you, you don't know this this project or you don't know the people behind it so and and you know the, the people behind them are incredibly persuasive and they really do hire the best people in marketing the best people in copywriting the best people in in, in psychology almost to, to bring people on so it can be incredibly hard to see what is what is a scam and what isn't and and some of them, I mean, for example, Hex, I have my feelings on. I, I believe it's not good. It's something I, I would personally advise everyone to steer a mile clear from. But like you say, it hasn't been proven to, to be that yet. There's no there's not been law enforcement come in to, to close it down. And, you know, even we've seen with some of the ones where law enforcement has come in to close them down. One coin, for example, you've got people that are in rest that have been arrested. You've got people in prison for life for promoting that. It's it's all over the papers. It's all over the press that it's a scam, and you've still got people promoting it. If you go into mm -hmm. LinkedIn and just type in one coin, for example, there's still over a hundred people actively promoting it. There's still people around the world promoting these um, scams, even when law enforcement has cracked in, even when people have been arrested. So it shows how deep they get and and how big a problem it is yeah yeah and um you know with the instance of hex i think this is a good example because while it might not be a scam so to speak mm -hmm. the way that it was set up originally for the first two years in my opinion is what makes it a scam but then after those two years you know, now it's like a quote unquote legitimate coin, mm. but everything that got it to that point was illegitimate in my opinion. So for something that was like kind of a scam, but then became legitimate, like how, how do people navigate that? And like, what are your thoughts there? Because for example, a uh, real quick, if BitClout came out with withdrawals, mm. then people would say, so it's not a scam. It is legit. Not and I would say, because scams are but there's still all this withdrawals. other, yeah, there's still all this other stuff they did. They lied about the pre-mine. They artificially inflated the values of everything. So mm -hmm. it's like, where does that line get drawn and, and, and how do people navigate that? 
I mean, I guess my my feeling is with with Hex. I mean, you're you're right. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It's 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 not risk free. And maybe let's just leave it at that. But if you look at who they market to, if if you, uh, I think. I mean, I haven't done this this survey, but I, I'm fairly sure if one were to do a, a questionnaire of of any hundred people that have been in the crypto space and that are really educated, knowledgeable about crypto, uh, probably the vast majority of those won't ever have, have even heard. Of, of these projects uh, and they certainly won't have invested in them. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think one question is to ask it, who are these projects marketing to? Where are they marketing to? Are they are they trying to target a, a crypto audience or, or, or not? Um, I, I think that's one question that can be asked. And then I, I guess my feeling is, and there's so many good projects in this space where there's no doubt necessarily i i guess my my personal feeling is if if one really wants to invest in crypto or really wants to get into the space or or investigate further into the space there's enough projects out there where there's no doubt about them now maybe they won't necessarily guarantee that the returns but at least they're 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 clearly good projects and i think one of the the problems is for something that's a scam or for something that's that's dubious it's easy for them to promise high returns and to offer high returns and, and to say we'll get you this or you'll get this return or you'll get that return and, and it's easy for them to say that because they're not regulated there's nothing stopping them saying that the regulators haven't cracked down on them yet whereas some of the the good projects maybe don't make those returns or or maybe they do but they don't promote that um and, and the focus is maybe on building out technology or on doing something great that isn't just focused on pumping up the price so i, I I can see how people are inclined to fall for the the, the great claims, but I, I think if there are promises and, and great claims about getting certain returns or something going up in price, A, is, is that sustainable? Is that possible? Is that legal for the project to say so? And, and B, where are those claims coming from? Are, are, are they founded? So. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess no, my that, feeling uh, is there's enough good projects out there that, if if in doubt, avoid the ones that aren't clear. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's like the the easiest piece of advice is just that y- if you just go for the stuff that is already you know well established, it's like blue chip stock investing versus going for penny stocks. Right. But everyone coming into crypto is going for the the quote unquote penny stocks. Right. So and there's so much market manipulation out there. The whole space isn't risk free. Yeah, exactly. So I, I guess my question is, is it just does it just come down to like the mindset people have or the psychology a lot of the time when they when they come into the crypto space? Is it more so that people are looking to get rich quick or is it more so like predatory marketing? Is it a kind of a mix of that? Like where, what, what can someone do themselves as an individual mm. uh, to just better prepare for, for this kind of thing? I, I think it's a combination of all of those. It's, it's people wanting to get rich quick, people seeing that other people previously have, have got rich quick or have had these, these huge returns and wanting the same for themselves. I think it's predatory marketing and people falling for that and people wanting to believe that. And then, uh, I think also it's it's a psychology. If you want to get into crypto now, to, to buy a Bitcoin, for example, it's a huge amount of money. Uh, and, and most people aren't just going to have that amount of money to buy a Bitcoin. Whereas the, the, the psychology is if you buy a Doge or, you know, whatever it is, a Ripple, or whatever it is, you can get more of them. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think that's not, not that that's a problem necessarily. But the, the psychology is, is you want to have lots of something. So... Uh, and you know, again, not saying that the Doge is a scam. I don't, I don't believe that that is the case at all. But there, there are scams that do prey on people's desire to have lots of something. So buy this package of of lots of these crypto coins, and these crypto coins will multiply. Or buy this this mm-hmm. package, and will mine you lots of new crypto coins and so forth. And people prey on that desire of, of people to to get in there and try and make it easier and more accessible for people, rather than doing themselves oh just send us your money and we'll do this for you and you'll you'll get these returns so i i I think it's a whole combination and and as you say the space is so gray at the moment between what are pure scams and what are 
opportunistic and, and, and those that are good that have maybe just been pumped outside of their control where people may or may not still lose money. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I could never wrap my head around that psychology. I mean, I, I, I get it, but uh, it always just makes me cringe when people are like opting in to invest in, I guess my analogy would be like buying a ridiculous amount of copper instead of gold. For example, although ironically, with inflation, copper is like soaring in value. Right. Um, but but in, in normal circumstances, I guess is, is that's how I would akin it to. Mm-hmm. It's like you're buying a lot of something that isn't very valuable instead of something like a small amount of something that is very valuable. And I'm not saying that like Doge can't go up in value or whatnot. As we've seen, um, it has done. Yeah, exactly. So so I mean, like, but I get the psychology. You know, people want to have a lot of something. Um, but I always kind of bring it, you know, try to, to ground or sober those people by saying, look, if I invest $5 in Bitcoin or $5 in Doge and both of them double, I have $10. Right. So like, you know, and you have to have high conviction in what you're investing in to actually make money on it. So you can't just put $10 into Doge and become a millionaire. You have to put, you know, like in an example of, um, I think it's pro the doge. He put in his life savings and he turned 180,000 into 2 million. Now that's amazing, yeah, but, but could have gone you have to have the, con- exactly. And you have to have to the conviction. Pretend. Yeah. And you have to have the conviction to put in a huge amount to actually make money. So my friends who put in like $50 to doge think they're going to become a millionaire. Well, that's just like silly because you actually have to put, you have to have to risk something to make money if you're going to do something like that as well. Or get in so, or be incredibly lucky. And I mean, that, exactly. that, that's a point. I mean, it's, it's, if you're going to get into anything, uh, so many people want to just jump in and, and, and jump into this or jump into that and, you know, the, just do an incredible amount of research and be really, really sure on what you're doing. And if, if you want to go in, just, yeah, go in with with money that you're happy to never see again. Yeah, and yeah, and I mean... Know, know what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, the only time I ever did that was when I was very, very new to the space and I bought some Doge and I went on Cryptopia and I was just buying all these random altcoins because right. I was like, hey, like maybe I'll become a millionaire. Uh, ironically, uh, Cryptopia got shut down and I lost all of my funds on the on that exchange. Um, so, you know, there's a lesson for uh, people who do that. Um, and unfortunately, my $300 of Doge would now be worth 125000 that's annoying. Uh, so yeah, that's annoying. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, avoid, uh, avoid like random, weird, obscure exchanges and just things that aren't very like credible or, or, or legitimate. Um, so we've covered most of what I wanted to talk about. Is this problem going to get worse, going to get better? What do we need to do? Can this be solved? I, I think in the long term, it will get better. Um, it, it, in that if you look at, say, so the, the abundance of, of, of scams in, in the earlier days of crypto, it was maybe higher than there are now and that there's more good projects that are bringing out great technologies that are really focused on on, on, on bringing out incredibly incredible new technologies and offerings. And, and I, I like to think, at least certainly from what I see, that the majority of projects out there now are... Are, are good versus bad. Uh, I think the, the problem now is that the scams are getting bigger, they're getting smarter, they're getting better at marketing, they're better getting better at scamming people, they've got more resources, they've learned more, um, and, and that they're, they're, they're getting bigger in scale. Um, but I, I like to think, you know, regulation will come in. It, it's it's probably going slow, but what, what really is, is needed is if there is, say, an industry standard or regulation giving us sort of a a stamp of approval to those companies that are good that will make it harder for the the, the bad companies to to stand out or to to get those followings because then there'll be questions of why aren't you regulated or why don't you have this or why don't you have that um so i do think it it it, it will get better um at, at the moment there are still a lot of scams and they're sort of going around the world and spreading to people who can't necessarily defend themselves and um, you know, on, aren't necessarily the ones that will raise awareness that they've been scammed. Um, so it's it's not going to be an overnight thing. I think it's just a question of being incredibly careful with what you do do. But that that saying that 
the overwhelming majority, at least of what I see of, of projects in the space, are, are bringing out some incredible new technologies and ideas and are, are focused on doing good. But y- you still have got the problem of, of markets being manipulated and of these sort of unofficial pump and dumps of, of influence and so forth promoting crypto coins. Yeah, yeah. Um, so where do you see the space going in the next few years? Uh, I guess I, I ideally, since it's always hard to uh, to look very far into the future for crypto. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, Bitcoin is really interesting at the moment. You've got a few years ago, you've got banks and some people were like, well, we can't go near crypto and we don't want to do anything with this Bitcoin thing. And, and you've now got so much institutional uh, either investment into to Bitcoin and crypto or you know, adoption or companies accepting that as a method of payment or holding it on their balance sheets even. Um, and, and you've now got a lot of the companies that, that I saw in banks, for example, that a few years ago would have been uh, avoiding crypto are, are now actively getting involved. So I, I think for, for Bitcoin now, there's so much more adoption, understanding, acceptance. I think that that's now sort of fairly fairly mainstream. So I think that's going to be really exciting to see where, where that goes and, and how the ecosystem grows on that and acceptance of, of crypto. And there's a, a lot of really, really sort of fast growing startups that are, are doing incredible things. And, you know, certainly what I see with the UK community, there's a brain drain uh, of, of people leaving really high paying good jobs in 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 banking and defense a sweet c-suite of, of of large corporations to go work in in some of these startups because they're faster moving because they see them as more exciting because they see that they can make more money by having a share of these companies so there's incredibly smart people constantly going to work in the space um so i think that that is evolving really really fast so certainly the the side that i see from the crypto curry club is is you've got these um, these startups that are hiring incredible people and, and are expanding and, uh, and are doing incredible new things for, you know, for or, or, on every aspect in, in payments or in, you know, in the remittances or in sustainability or in logistics and so forth. So the, the space is, is evolving in a really positive way. Um, and, and that's saying I think one just has to continue to be super, 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 super cautious of, of the markets. They're still highly volatile. Is the volatility going to go away in the immediate future? No, I can't imagine that. Um, do I expect a massive correction at some point? Yep. Um, and, you know, maybe it will go up again then. But I, I, I suddenly wouldn't say that now, especially now with crypto being so high, it's the safest um, thing in the world for something that's just going to stay stable and just go up. Um, but I, I think especially with Bitcoin and, and say Ethereum, I think there's just so much more acceptance and adoption and, and use now of it. And, you know, I mean, the interesting thing with, with those is only a finite number, you know, of, of Bitcoin, for example, out there. Um, so, you know, lo- logic would have it supply and demand that there's going to continue to be demand on, on that mm-hmm. space. Um uh, and, you know, I think then it's just a question of being super, super careful of, of of the scams and of the claims and of the projects and of the other side of the industry. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's uh, that's everything on my end. Um, where can everyone go to learn more about you, about uh, uh, Crypto Curry and, uh, and to get your book? Yep. So we've got a website, CryptoCurryClub.com. So Crypto Curry, Curry like the food club, um, dot com. So um, we've got a weekly newsletter, the Crypto Courier, that goes out every Friday, just summarizing the main uh, news and events in, in crypto and DeFi and blockchain every Friday. That's totally free to get. We've got a, a monthly industry publication, Blockchain Industry Review, that's out once the last Wednesday of every month, just with the some deep dive features and interviews of, of people driving the way in, in the space. Again, totally free to get digitally so that you can subscribe to those on the website. Um, and we've got a, I've got a, a book out, um, the Crypto Wars book, which is, is available on, on Amazon. And it's, it's available, I think, in most countries around the world for pre-order. So that's a sort of a deep dive into the, the biggest hacks and scams and problems in the crypto space. But, you know, ending up on a what I hope is a, a positive uh, chapter showing some of the, the really cool and amazing hope and, and use cases of, of crypto as well. 
Awesome. Awesome. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for shedding your knowledge and uh, just getting us much more acquainted with uh, all the crazy scams and hacks and things going on. Uh, for everyone watching, if you do want to learn more, definitely go and check out her book, uh, join Crypto Curry, get involved there. Um, I'm really excited to read it myself and uh, just okay. dive more into all the all the crazy scams and things going on. I think it's very important for people to be uh, much more educated and uh, get much more aware of all of these things, especially if you're investing in crypto or just in general, because a lot of these scams are not specific to crypto. They they span all industries. So uh, again, thank you so much for the amazing work that you're doing uh, by uncovering these things and, uh, and helping people learn more. Uh, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so awesome. much.